All right, there's uh, one thing that I want to tackle, maybe even two, but uh, there's one thing I want to focus on. Listen to this gal. If you're lukewarm, you will miss this rapture. For sure, was what, what God wants me to say. Um, now, maybe not the next rapture. You won't miss that, but you will have to face a great great tribulation. So. All right, so that's just, I don't want to focus on that, but I in the future I will be talking more about this idea of two raptures or two ends of the world or two resurrections of the body of Christ right Jesus Christ has resurrected and ascended to heaven and a promise to come back for us he's only gonna come back once and when he comes back he comes for all all that are in him or all that are his and then it's the end of the world so you can't have an end of the world and then another end of the world okay that all right put all that aside and let's continue with what she's talking about here what I mean by once saved, always saved is true to a certain degree is that um, you can lose your salvation if if you make sin how can I say this? If you make sin a daily practice. Alright, good enough. Alright, so if you make sin a daily practice, you will lose your salvation. Alright, so let me share a verse here in Leviticus 19 verse 28 ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor print any marks upon you I am the Lord now if you have a tattoo you know I, I don't know that this gal has any tattoos and I'm not condemning anybody that has tattoos keep that in mind and she looks to me like she's sitting on the toilet that's re that's neither here or there but if if you have tattoos and you believe this daily practice of sin now having tattoos are a sin there's no disputing that you cannot argue that that's crystal clear that's cut and dried that is absolute fact to have a tattoo is sin no question about it so if you have sin if you have if you have tattoos you have sin every day constantly non-stop until the day you die you're gonna have that sin upon you all you, unless you you get it covered up I guess I don't know anybody that's ever had a tattoo and then had it removed but <clears throat> I hear it's possible but if you have that tattoo you have that sin and it's with you every single day and so what this gal is saying look this is simple logic if that tattoo is sin you have it every single day you're practicing sin every single day because that tattoo is stuck to you every single day and then therefore you can never get saved now that, that's what these people are teaching that somebody taught that to her she didn't get that from the Bible somebody explained it to her that way and she's like oh, okay all right well then Christians are going to hell because uh, they're not perfect never mind that I'm not perfect I mean this sort of stuff does not come from God this idea that you can lose your salvation it does not come from God it comes from the devil because look at what the idea uh, is doing it is condemning people because they're not perfect nobody's perfect right so what the devil wants to do is make you feel guilty make you feel insecure and uh, the devil does not want you to have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that's what the devil wants it, that's not what that's not coming from God God is not trying to defeat your confidence God is not trying to get you to doubt your salvation and God is not God is not even condemning you um, if you know if you 
have, I mean, you, everybody has sin, right? And so God is there to lead us or guide us away from sin. All right. Uh, you know, and I could say, hey, look, you know, what is that verse in, let me find it. Let's see. Let me find a verse here. Oh, that's a good one. There, these are all good. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I, I honestly, I don't. You could, you could show this to these sorts of people, and they won't. They can't see it. They have no idea what that means. You could ask them. Hey, go learn what that means. And they, I don't know what that means. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. And what's this lady doing? She's condemning anybody that sins. Now she has to think about this. If you make sin... How can I say this? If you make sin... Hey, how can I say this? I, I, want, I want you to feel guilty. I want to condemn you. Meanwhile... What about her? You know, she would be, it would, it would be more genuine if she said, if I, if I sin. If you make sin. If you, if you make sin. You know, but it, it would be better, it would be more genuine if she said, if I. And you know, if you're trying to teach somebody you lead by example like Jesus did are you gonna tell me there was a better teacher than Jesus lose your salvation if you can lose your salvation if you what about you lady I mean I'm telling you there's no way to lose your salvation you're stuck Chuck and if you don't like it too bad so sad uh, you're stuck once you're saved that's it Charlie you can't get out you cannot escape. All right, and then uh, I want to finish on, uh, of course, James chapter two, verse ten. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. I mean, the law is there to show us that we're not perfect, right? The law is there to be our school master to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith but after that faith has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster this stuff is so simple and so easy it really is Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I want to show something here and I'll end it. Hebrews 11. I recommend this. Look at all these. See all these yellow dots? Those are every time the word faith is mentioned in Hebrews 11. <laughs> If you read Hebrews 11 and you still don't get it, God help you. <laughs>